All right, thanks for having out your uh, scratch paper, being ready to go today while I'm gone. Um, first thing I'm going to ask you to do is sketch a graph for each of these. Where are they? They're, where are they? They're up over here. So these ones that are up over here, uh, sketch a graph of this, sketch a graph of that. Remember, you're just sketching the graph. Don't worry about making it really exact, but do label your x-intercepts and your y-intercepts. Um, we'll pause the video, we'll give you some time to do that, and we'll come back and show you the solution. All right, I'm pausing the video now. Okay, so you're here because you're done. So let's go ahead and sketch some of these. Looking at this one that I labeled G, um, I can maybe try and draw this straight. I can take a peek at these. Uh, remember, I'm making zeros. What makes this output a zero? So one of them will be negative three, one of them will be at negative one, one will be at negative two. Again, what I'm doing is I'm just taking each of these, setting them equal to zero, and solving them. These ones are pretty easy to do. Oh, so they're all negative. So one here at negative three, one at negative two, one at negative one. And then remember to get my, my uh, y intercept, I let x equal zero. When x equals zero, I have 0 plus 3, 0 plus 1, 0 plus 2, 3 times 1 times 2 is 6, so about here, I'm going to label this, and since it's going through there, I know that it's something like that, label these, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, uh, 0, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I don't know how high or low these go. That's okay. I'm just sketching a graph of it. So there is my sketch of that, but it should be smooth. Uh, looking at the next one, it's very similar. Although notice I've got an x plus 3 and an x plus 3. That's, that's repeated, right? So there's something funny going on at negative 3. It has a multiplicity of 2. Still at negative 1, still at negative 2. And now if I think about where this y-intercept is at, uh, let x equal 0. So 0 plus 3, 0 plus 1, uh, 0 plus 2, 0 plus 3. Multiply all those together. 9 times 1 is 9 times 2 is 18. So it'll be way up here at uh, 0, 18. Should go through that. And now remember, this negative 3, this happens twice. It comes from two different places. So when that happens, you have a multiplicity of 2. It bounces off. It doesn't go through there. So I know it goes through this point. So it's going to go through this, through this. But here it's going to bounce off and look like that, right? It looks like a little mini, a little mini parabola there. All right. Let's jump on to the next piece. So what I would like you to do now is sketch a graph of this one. So uh, same idea. Identify the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts, and sketch a graph. So just take a couple minutes, pause the video now. Fantastic, welcome back. Uh, I'm gonna say good job. So uh, let's take a look at this x-intercepts. What makes this a zero? What makes this a zero? Ah, it's repeated. It's gonna bounce off at that point. And what makes this a zero too? So there's some, there's some uh, x-intercepts. Remember that's where it crosses or touches the x-intercept, uh, sorry, the x-axis, one, two, three, negative three. So this is the point two, zero. This is the point negative three, zero. I'm going to label those points. If I want to know where my y-intercept is at, I let x equal zero. And now notice this one has a, a multiplier out front. It has a stretch. So be careful about finding the y-intercept on this one. Uh, as I let x equal zero, I have negative 2, because negative 2 is just negative 2. The 0 doesn't affect it. 0 plus 3 is 3. 0 plus 3 is 3. Uh, 0 minus 2 is negative 2. I'm going to multiply all those things together. Uh, negative 2, let's see what this is. 9, positive 4, and I think that's probably a 36. So it's way up here, wherever that is, at uh, 0, 36. Okay. so. This one has a multiplicity of two. So here it bounces. This one has a multiplicity of one. So it goes through here. So if it goes through the point here, I know it's gonna look like this. And it's gonna come down, bounce off that one and come back up. Bounce, go through. 
Again, I don't know, you know, how how curvy it's going to be, but I do know that it goes to these points. I don't know that it turns at that point even, right? It probably doesn't, but it's okay if I make it turn at that point. Something like that. There's a good sketch. So remember, as we're finding y-intercept, we have to take into account that multiplier out there. Right. Let's jump to some next pieces. So our next part. Uh, notice it says don't graph. So what I'd like you to do here is uh, find the x and the y-intercepts for each of these graphs. All right. Uh, pause the video, take a little time to do it, and then we'll come back and do a solution for it. So remember what you know about intercepts, x-intercepts and x and y-intercepts. Uh, x-intercepts are when the output is zero, what makes things zero. So remember what I'm doing is, you know, like many of you are looking at you're just saying, oh, it's just negative seven, it's just the opposite. Remember what we're doing is we're actually solving it. We're saying x plus seven equals zero, and we're solving that. So subtract seven, x equals negative seven. So notice on this one right here, um, one of the mistakes I see people make on this is they'll say it's just negative one, but it's not because we're, we're looking for the x value that makes um, this whole thing equal to zero. And when I plug it in, it should make it a zero. So what I'm gonna do, and you're always doing this, is I grab that factor, 2x plus 1, and I set it equal to 0. Now I solve that. That's going to give me the other x-intercept. So subtract 1 from both sides. Divide by 2. So the other value is negative 1 half. So notice my x-intercepts are negative 7, 0, and negative 1 half, 0. Right? Because if I plug those in, if I plug in a negative 7 into here, it makes this a zero, zero times whatever. If I plug a negative one half in, it makes this one a zero, zero times six and a half, which is still zero. All right, there's my x-intercepts. If I want to make my y-intercepts, that is when I let x equal zero. So let's do it. Let x equal zero. I've got zero plus seven times uh, two times zero plus one. Eh, seven times one is seven. So my y-intercept is the point zero, seven. Okay, similarly over on this one. X-intercepts. Makes this a zero? Negative four. So my next x-intercept is the point negative four, zero. Notice when I'm asking for x-intercepts or y-intercepts, I want the point negative four, zero. Uh, what makes this a zero? Negative one half. There's my x-intercepts. My y-intercept is going to be when x is zero. So when x is zero, I have four times a half, which is two. All right, there they are. A couple more things. Thanks for hanging in there uh, while you're listening to me talk on the past. So on this next part, I'm just gonna ask, I'm not gonna ask you to uh, pause the video or do anything. I'm gonna ask you to learn something new. So we're gonna talk about three different ideas here that are all, that are all linked to each other. They're all connected. Uh, describe the end behavior for each graph. Uh, end behavior talks about the extremes. What happens as x gets really big in the positive direction? What x happens as x gets really big in the negative direction? Uh, what's the max number of terms? We've talked about that al already a little bit. Right? This has, whoops, that's a terrible drawing. Let's try again. This has one, two, three, four. This has four turns. And what's the degree of the equation? And that's like the most multiplications that are going on. If I were to sketch this right here, if this was the graph I was looking at, I would say it goes up to the right and it goes down to the left. And the way I would write that is, notice as we're going to the right, X is getting really big. So what we'll say is, as X approaches infinity, and as it goes to the left, it's getting really big in the negative direction. So we'll say, as X approaches negative infinity. So if I was looking at this, if I talk about n behavior, it's left and right behavior, um, I would say as x approaches infinity, as x gets really big positive, this thing keeps going up. So y approaches positive infinity, right? If I go that way, uh, sorry, if I go that way, I go to infinity. If I go this way, I go to negative infinity, towards it, I should say. If I go up, I go towards positive infinity. If I go uh, down, I go towards negative infinity. 
And if I describe this left-hand behavior, as x goes to the left, so as x tends towards negative infinity, uh, y, this is going down. So I'd say y tends to negative infinity as well. And max number of turns, one, two, three, four. This has four turns. All right, so there's the idea of turns and infinities. Um, now, how do I read it in an equation? All right, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Here we go. We know if I were to graph y equals x, it just makes a straight line. If I graph y equals x squared plus some stuff, but x squared is like the biggest uh, power in it, that power, that biggest power is the degree. Uh, this goes like this. I also know if I graph x cubed plus some other stuff, it looks something like this. And uh, similarly, if I graph x to the fourth, it's going to look something like this. Notice that each time this degree goes up by one, each time I add a multiplication to it, I get a turn. Like opposite directions, if it's odd, even, same direction. Odd, opposite directions, even, same direction. So one thing about the end behavior, if, if the degree is even, left and right go in the same direction. If the degree is odd, first power, uh, left and right go in opposite directions. So I'm going to write that. Now there's one other thing I want to think about. And that is if I have a multiplier out front. If my multiplier out front is positive, this thing is just going to keep on growing in a positive direction. So if my multiplier out front is positive, it's going to go up to the right. If my multiplier out front is negative, it's going to go down to the right. And then I can just go from there. So got this. Um, okay, I'm going to clean up a little bit more and do some more stuff. Oh, max number of turns. I want to get that as well. The max number of turns, notice the degree here is 1. It doesn't turn at all. The degree here is 2. It turns once. The degree here is 3. It turns twice. The degree here is 4. 1, 2, 3. It turns 3 times. You can see it's just degree minus 1. And I want to emphasize that that's the maximum number of turns. It could have less, but that is the max that it's going to have. And then the degree, that's just the highest power. So let's take a look at this equation right here. Notice if I were to multiply this out, I'm going to end up with an x times x. I'm going to have an x squared in it. Okay, so my degree is, uh, is 2. That's how many x's are multiplied. Now from here I can say, well, the max number of turns then must be 1. Because it's 1 less than the degree, always. End behavior. My multiplier out here is positive. So if my multiplier is positive, I know it's going up to the right. So I can say, uh, as x approaches infinity, y also goes up, approaches infinity. Then I can say, okay, it's an even power. It's an even degree. So if the degree is even, they're going in the same direction. So if it's going up to the right, it's also going up to the left. So, and I can also say, as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches infinity. And I'll try and make this legible, uh, negative infinity. Okay, let's, let's look at another one. I've got two x's. So when I multiply this together, this would be an x squared. So degrees, max turns, always one less than the degree, so one. And now notice my multiplier is negative. So since my multiplier is negative, it has to go down to the right. So as x gets really big, uh, y is going to get really big in the negative direction. And since it's even, they're going in the same direction. So that means as I go to the left, as x tends towards negative infinity, uh, y does the same as this, also tends towards negative infinity. Okay, two more examples. 
degree. Well, if I were to multiply this out, I'm gonna end up with an x times an x times an x. I'm gonna have an x cubed, so my degree is three. Yeah, just how many x's are multiplied together. Uh, my maximum number of turns would be one less than that, two. All right, this multiplier is positive, so it must go up to the right. So as x approaches infinity, in other words, as it goes to the right, uh, y approaches infinity. Since this is odd, they're going to go in opposite directions. So as far as left-hand behavior is concerned, as x tends towards negative infinity, uh, y does the opposite. Instead of going up, it's going to go down. Similarly over here, boop, 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 degrees 3. Max turns, one less than that. Notice this is negative. So it, since my multiplier is negative, it's got to go down to the right. Since this is odd, they're going to go in opposite directions. So as x approaches negative infinity, as it goes to the left, y does the opposite instead of going down, the opposite from what the right hand does, right? Instead of going down, it goes up. All right. So there's that. Um, one thing I want to emphasize about this left-right behavior, if I'm going this way to the right, the way that I can talk about that is I say um, x approaches positive infinity. And as I go to the left, x approaches negative infinity. Similarly with up and down, y controls up and down. So if I'm saying it's going up, I'm going to say y approaches positive infinity. And if I'm going to say it's going down, I'm going to say y approaches negative infinity. And we, we say approaches because, like, these are numbers. They never actually get to infinity. They just get, I don't even know what it means to get closer to infinity. They get bigger. They get closer to infinity. Uh, like that's a spot. Okay. Hey, thank you for your time with this. I apologize uh, that I couldn't be here today. Um, take a look at the practice. Do what you can on it. Uh, check with Keith, and I hope you're having a good day.